Hello friends, welcome to videos by All or None Lottie. Thanks for subscribing to our channel. I'm going to talk about the red eye. I'm just going to discuss how to approach a patient with red eye. Red eye is a very common symptom that you come across in ophthalmology and red eye is commonly a symptom of an anterior segment of the eye that is structures anterior to the lens. It can be due to any pathology in the conjunctiva or cornea or iris or the sclera, the white part of the eye or the episclera, the tissue in front of the sclera. It can also be a symptom of acute angle closure glaucoma. There are a lot of other reasons as well for red eye, but these are the some of the important causes. So, any patient who presents to you with an acute symptom, that is a redness of few hours or one or two days, is something which needs a quick attention to rule out vision threatening complication as compared to a patient who says that he has been having red eyes for few months or few weeks or maybe even for years. The second important thing is if the patient says that his vision is affected then it is again something which is serious and it needs to be managed soon. Obviously if pain is a significant symptom apart from redness of the eye the patient needs to be treated as quickly as possible. Age of presentation is an important point because Painful red eye with decreased vision in an elderly patient can be an acute angle closure glaucoma which can lead to loss of vision in few hours. On the other side, a patient who comes with a red eye without any pain or loss of vision is not an acute ocular emergency. Some important history that you should always ask in a patient who is having red eyes is any injury to the eye? Contact lens use is very common these days and if a patient is having contact lens related problem then that is again something which can lead to contact lens related keratitis and acute loss of vision always a good systemic history is important especially history of connective tissue disease or any inflammatory diseases like Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, rheumatoid arthritis they all can be associated with iridocyclitis which is a cause for red eye. Again a history of similar episodes in the past gives you an idea whether the patient has got iridocyclitis as a reason for the red eye or sometimes allergic causes too can cause a recurrent redness of the eyes. Ask for history of allergy, history of asthma or eczema as well give you a clue to the possible cause for redness of the eye. Just a brief anatomy of the eye when you look at the cross section this is the cornea the front of the eye and this line indicates the iris so the aperture between the iris is the pupil and the structure behind the iris is the lens The space between the posterior surface of the cornea and the anterior surface of the iris constitutes anterior chamber of the eye and the space between the posterior surface of the iris and the anterior surface of the lens constitutes posterior chamber of the eye. The space between the cornea 
and the anterior surface of the lens constitutes the anterior segment. The lens is included in the anterior segment of the eye, whereas structures behind the lens, that is vitreous, retina, choroid, they all constitute the posterior segment of the eye. Some important points to differentiate between conjunctival and ciliary congestion, that is the redness due to congestion of the conjunctival blood vessels or congestion due to ciliary blood vessels. It's important to differentiate between these two because they again give us a clue to the possible cause for the redness of the eye. This is just a picture drawn by me just to explain about the conjunctival and ciliary congestion. This black circle indicates the limbus that is the junction between the cornea and the sclera. There is the conjunctiva which covers the sclera all around up to the limbus. Ciliary blood vessels are present around the limbus. They are related at, at a deeper plane. They are also called as circumcorneal blood vessels. In contrast to that, the ciliary blood vessels are distributed all around the conjunctiva. So, we want to differentiate between conjunctival and ciliary congestion. The most important thing is the position of the congestion or the redness. If the redness is around the cornea, that is in the limbus, that is called a ciliary congestion and that is something which gives us a clue that the cause for redness is something either in the cornea or in the iris. Whereas the conjunctival congestion is maximum at the fornices, that is where the bulbar and palpebral conjunctiva meet, either the inferior fornix or the superior fornix. It is very important to see whether the congestion is conjunctival or ciliary. So, in a patient who has got red eye, what do we look for? Most important thing is vision. Record the vision, try to look whether the vision is affected or not. Always ask the patient how was the vision before. Sometimes patient will have poor vision in the affected eye. The other thing is try to see whether there is a conjunctival congestion or ciliary congestion. Look at the cornea whether cornea is clear or whether the cornea looks hazy. The other important thing that we need to look for is presence of hypopion. Hypopion is a sterile collection in the anterior chamber of the eye. Pupil should always be examined to see whether the pupil is normal or whether pupil is dilated or whether pupil is constricted or irregular. Anterior chamber depth is very important in making a diagnosis of angle closure glaucoma. Intraocular pressure can be recorded with various instruments but sometimes trying to feel the pressure within the eye by digital palpation as well gives a clue about the intraocular pressure within the eye whether it is very ha hard or whether it is soft or whether it is normal. So the important differential diagnosis in the causes for red eye are first the acute attack of angle closure glaucoma, second the corneal ulcer, third acute ardocyclitis, 
fourth conjunctivitis. I have written it in this sequence in risk of vision loss. The risk of vision loss is maximum with acute attack of angle fragile glaucoma as compared to other causes and conjunctivitis does not per se cause loss of vision. Let us try to look for some clinical scenarios. An elderly patient, when I say elderly, I mean after 60 years of age, coming with a severe pain for one day associated with loss of vision. When you examine this patient, you will realize that the vision is very poor. It may be just hand movements which is due to the severe corneal edema. The pain will be very severe. They may not allow you to examine the eye. And when you examine, you will see that there is a ciliary congestion. And the anterior chamber will be very shallow. You can examine the depth of the anterior chamber just with a torch. Try to put the torch light on the temporal side at the limbus you can see the depth of the anterior chamber and when you try to feel the eye you will feel that the eye is stony hard that means the pressure is very high that goes more in favor of acute attack of angle closure glaucoma and it needs to be managed straight away and another case scenario a patient comes to you with a pain, intolerance to the light, blurring of vision and redness. The symptoms may be there for a few days and usually it is unilateral, though sometimes you may get bilateral. When you examine, you will see ciliary congestion. The cornea can be hazy because of the corneal edema. When you examine the posterior surface of the cornea, you will see some deposits on the posterior surface of the cornea. They are called as keratic precipitates, also called as KPs. And you will also see some reaction in the anterior chamber in the form of cells and flare. Because of this inflammation within the eye, the pupil can be stuck to the posterior the posterior surface of the iris can be struck to the anterior surface of the lens causing the pupil to become irregular in shape or the pupil can become small. The intraocular pressure can be high or it can be normal as well. This goes more in favor of aldosaclitis or anterior uveitis. Conjunctivitis is a relatively benign condition. It usually starts in one eye and generally involves the other eye within a week or so. It is characteristically painless and the vision is not affected. Though the patient may feel that the vision is blurred because of the discharge coming in front of the cornea. The Three major types of conjunctivitis can be differentiated based on the discharge. In bacterial conjunctivitis, there will be yellow discharge in the eye and the patient will say they have sticky eyes. In contrast to this, a patient with viral conjunctivitis will say that they, will, they are having a lot of watering but there is no sticky discharge in the eye. Allergic conjunctivitis, the characteristic symptom is itchy eyes. The history is generally longer, it may be weeks to months. And when you examine any patient with conjunctivitis, the cornea is clear, pupil is normal, intraocular pressure is normal, and vision is normal. Though you may have few signs on the conjunctiva, So again, 
another case scenario a 60 year old patient comes with unilateral severe pain decreased vision and redness since one day but no discharge on examination the cornea is hazy because of the corneal edema anterior chamber is shallow pupil is dilated fixed non-reactive and eye feels stony hard on digital examination it is angle closure glaucoma 25 year old patient comes with unilateral pain intolerance to the light redness and decreased vision for two to five days but again no discharge and when you examine there are some keratic precipitates cells and plate in the anterior chamber goes more in favor of aldosaclitis aldosaclitis commonly is a symptom of young or middle-aged population though it can be seen in all the age groups including children and elderly people another clinical scenario where a 20 year old gentleman or a lady comes with a history of pain decreased vision and redness for two to three days there is a history of contact lens use and on examination you see a white spot or opacity on the cornea on torch examination it goes in favor of corneal ulcer another scenario where a 50 year old gentleman comes with bilateral redness and discharge for one week but no problem with vision and there is no pain and when you examine this patient the cornea is clear pupil is normal vision is normal that goes in favor of conjunctivitis so the key message in this presentation is always rule out vision threatening complications in a patient coming with red eye pain and decreased vision in a red eye is more concerning symptom than isolated red eye and most importantly always look for the ocular signs before making diagnosis as symptoms always are not enough to make a diagnosis thanks for watching this video please do give your feedbacks on the presentation